friends, we are gathered here today to remember this. Jesus cares for us. Thank him. Let's praise God together. The opening hymn is This is the Day, number 657 in the United Methodist Hymnal. As Pastor Martha said, the song leader will sing the parts indicated, and we will respond by singing the parts marked all. to our Pets Unleashed celebration. I'm Jennifer, and I was honored to be able to direct Vacation Bible School this year. The, yesterday, we spent barking, chirping, meowing, squeaking, hopping, bopping, running, and leaping our way into discoveries of how Jesus cares for us. That's our Bible point, by the way. And whenever you hear me say, Jesus cares for us, you'll shout, thank him. Okay, so are we ready? Let's try that. Jesus cares for us. Thank him. All right. Now, I'm going to ask my Pets Unleashed friends, who were here yesterday, both the kids and the leaders, to come up to help us sing our first song. Don't be shy, guys. Come on. I want to hear you guys sing. All right. Oh, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We're going to sing one song. <laughs> Come on up, come on up. Now you can stand up on, I want you to stand up on the, the steps today. Don't stand too close to the edge because, you know, you don't want to fall or anything. So climb on up. And the first song that we're going to sing is Thankful. To think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in. Everything I need is 
see we had a howling good time learning about the way Jesus cares for us thank him another highlight of our VBS was meeting our new friend Goldie Retriever help me welcome Goldie Goldie, that's a large bag of dog food. Oh my goodness, you're telling me. Oh, but you know, I, I wanted to uh, to have some to give to my dog Romeo so that he has a lot to eat. Well, I think you're safe there, but I thought Romeo was a small dog. Well, he is, but you know, yesterday I went back to the pet shelter where I, I got Romeo and I looked around and there are all these dogs and, and everything and I thought, you know, I'm going to donate some of this. To Romeo and to the pet shelter. Goldie, that is a wonderful idea. I'm so glad you have such a wonderful, caring heart. I know the animal shelter will appreciate your donation. Oh, yeah. You know, learning about Jesus and how Jesus cared for us in Vacation Bible School helped me to remember that I need to care about all kinds of people and pets and things and, well, just everything. Me too, Goldie. In fact, let's hear about a special project the kids at Pets Unleashed put together to show loving care for others because of what they learned about Jesus. Why don't you go ahead and take your donation to the animal show? See you guys. So, we, we, we did do crafts yesterday because you know you can't have VBS without crafts. Um, but we also um, did projects with a purpose along with our pet theme, Onico coordinated um, the kids in making a couple of items that we're going to donate to the Montgomery County uh, Humane Society. So we have some cat scratchers. <laughs> and then for those of you that were kind enough to bring in old t-shirts to donate, we use those to create chew toys that will either, will hopefully go home with the dogs as they find their forever home. And I think we, and like I said, we'll convince Goldie to donate her bag of, bag of dog food as well. So, so thank you, Annika. So it's so exciting to see all the learning and caring and praising and serving that happened at Pets Unleashed VBS. And it's all because Jesus cares for us. Thank, Thank him. him. So let's do exactly that. Please join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly God, thank you for sending your son Jesus and for giving him a heart like yours that cares for us in, way, in a way no one else can. We're thankful for the examples of loving care you surround us with our family, our friends, and even our beloved pets. We ask that you use our projects to bless others. Through the, gifts of these awesome, through the gifts these awesome kids made, people will see that it's you who cares most for them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I think we're going to sing one more. We are, but before we sing one more song, I want to thank Jennifer. Hold on just a minute here. <laughs> you know, ever since I've been here, I think Jennifer... Every year that we've had Bible school, Jennifer has been involved with it. She's directed it. She's put all the things together. And we are so grateful to you. I hope you like it. <laughs> I'll just sit this one. So grateful for her. Uh, when I think about the things I'm grateful for, that Jennifer is one of them, and we should all be as well. All right, so um, is it time for that last song? Ooh, okay, let me get my book, because again, you know... <laughs> 
Right. All right, so this one's a little bit wild and crazy, and sometimes I can sing it, and sometimes I can't. I don't know. We'll see how it goes now. How about you guys? Are you feeling confident? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let me find the God is always with us. That is a tough act to follow. But moving on to the scripture reading, um, it is in the context for Vacation Bible School theme scripture. Uh, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. I will be reading from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Uh, Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was getting ready this morning, Mark walked in. He said, you are not wearing church clothes. <laughs> I said, I'm wearing vacation Bible school clothes. I can't sing those songs in church clothes. But anyway, so I decided to put on my preaching clothes now. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, you, you just heard that in Vacation Bible School, whenever Jennifer, a teacher, said Jesus cares for us, we were supposed, were supposed to respond, thank him, right? So that's a good thing for all of us to remember. So let's say it again. Jesus cares for us. Thank him. Thank him. Amen to that. And our VBS verse was, well, you heard it in the scripture, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Let's say that. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Amen. The people that Peter wrote this letter to, the portion of it that you just heard uh, Matthew read, were in trouble. Trouble different from ours. They were suffering, not just the general types of suffering that we all go through, but they were suffering because they were Christians. And you know, that happened in the early church different, at different times. There would be periods of stronger persecution than others. And honestly, most Christians in America don't suffer the way Peter's friends suffered. People who love and follow Jesus are allowed in our country to practice their faith without oppression, generally, and without fear. Now, not true in every case, but, but this is not true even to the extent that we have it in every country around the world. I read this story uh, told by Gordon McClellan about his friend Benjamin, who um, experienced brutal persecution in the modern age because he was Christian. He lived in another country, and in that country, the, the dominant religion was another religion. And so when he converted to Christianity, when he decided to become a Christian, his father was so upset with him that he put him out of the house. Imagine that, boys and girls, or even grown-ups, that you would be sent away from your family because of what you believed. And so he made the decision to leave his beloved country to try to find another place where he could practice his, his faith freely and as he he set out for the border and he went on the only type of transportation he had his own two feet and somewhere along the way he was picked up he was arrested and put in prison not sure why and I guess the prison guards found out that he was Christian and they decided that they would do what they could do to make him renounce his faith and so almost every night for months they beat him but they couldn't make him renounce his faith in Christ. And the surprising thing was that every time the guards heard him, he would forgive them. One of the, the jailers became intrigued with Benjamin. He wondered how this man could offer love and forgiveness even when the guards were so cruel to him. So one night after a vicious beating, the guard came back to see him and to ask, Why? Why do you forgive me and the other guards when we hurt you? And so Benjamin told the guard about Jesus, how Jesus taught people to love and forgive, and how Jesus actually practiced that even on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Well, the guard just walked away shaking his head. Just couldn't believe it. But he must have thought about it some more because he came back and he helped Benjamin escape. And he did this time make it out of the country to another country where he could pursue his studies. And he got a Ph.D. in religious studies and then came back to his home to establish churches. So it's good to remember, people right now in this world do suffer for their faith. 
even though that's not our experience here. So maybe you're asking yourself if, if this passage from 1 Peter uh, even applies to you, right? Because it was written to a different time, a different set of circumstances. Since most of us haven't suffered for our faith, does it matter? So if we say, no, this doesn't apply to us, well, I can stop right here. We can go home a little early. Don't say, yeah, let's do that. No. <laughs> But I think these verses don't just apply to people who are persecuted for their faith. They really apply to all Christians. So I'm going to read a few of the verses again, uh, starting with the, the seventh verse of chapter 5. This was our theme verse. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now listen to this. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert like a roaring lion. Imagine that. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. And then listen carefully to this next verse. Resist the devil, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Now, whether Peter is referring to people who are being persecuted for their faith or people just like us who have the more common griefs and frustrations and troubles of everyday living that can take us down, the important thing to remember is that we are not alone. Remember, we have brothers and sisters in the faith here in our church, Across the road over there at the Presbyterian Church, down on South Washington in the Episcopalian Church, even on down the road in the Catholic Church of St. Mary's, and all over. We're connected by our faith in Christ. We do not walk through this life alone. We do not walk through this life alone. Now, we do talk about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's important. Because I'm going to tell you, folks, we need to feel that Jesus is more than just an interesting man who had some good ideas about how to get along in the world. We're called to love Jesus with our whole being. But Christianity is also not just about our personal relationship with Jesus and, and, but unfortunately, I think that's where it stops for many Christians. At its very core, Christianity is about being a part of the body of Christ. That was an image that was uh, adopted very early in the life of the church. In the Pauline letters, some of the earliest things written, we are the body of Christ, which is much, much bigger than the persecutions or the struggles or the griefs or the frustrations or the joys or the triumphs of this life and of any one person. John Donne says, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. That's why we don't sing things like my way at funerals. That's the gospel of Frank Sinatra, not the gospel of Christ. If we forget we're part of something much greater than our personal opinions, our personal beliefs and needs and wants, if we forget that we're part of something even greater than our families, as much as we love our families, and we do, if we forget that, we begin to drift apart. We begin to become content with what's comfortable for us. I like it when we do it this way. I like this. I like that. And not only that, when we do that, we begin to lose interest in each other. We stop caring about each other's troubles and needs. We find ourselves less able to love the world with Christ-like love, that is, to love our neighbors as ourselves. The letter from Peter, you remember, talks about the devil, like a roaring lion prowling around, looking for someone to eat up. Now, there are a lot of ways to think about this verse, and there are many ways to think about who the devil is in Scripture, right? and what the Scripture means by that. But I think one of the greatest evils that the old devil can do is to divide people from one another. I know I've talked about it before, but in C.S. Lewis's novella, The Great Divorce, Lewis imagines what heaven is like. New arrivals come in by a bus which they've boarded from some far off straight on a long, uh, on a long mean street where it's dark and rainy. 
But when they get to heaven, there's this unbelievable beauty and this realness. Things are almost hard, or they are hard in their realness. It's just too much for many of them to take in. They're frightened by heaven. You know, we usually think about heaven as being a comfortable place, but he's imagining it as a place that, oh, whoa. And um, guides who've been in heaven for a while show up to help the people finish their final journey to God. And the guides say to the newcomers, this will be a difficult journey, but we'll help you. You're not alone. Some of the newcomers actually cannot face what lies ahead, or they're disappointed in heaven. Like, well, that's not what I expected. Or they don't like the guides sent to help them. You're sent to help me? No, thank you. So they choose to leave heaven and go back to that dreary place where they started the journey. And in that place, that's a place where people just keep moving further and further, further away from each other until they are off in a little hell of their own. One of the greatest dangers we face as Christians is letting the devil tear us from each other. I'm preaching to myself today. You know, sometimes when I don't agree with a Christian brother or sister, I find myself getting a little judgy and superior. Or even worse, I get irritable and snarky. Some of you saw me do that this week. Bless you. This passage from 1 Peter reminds me that this divisive spirit that often shows up in my own heart is not of God, is not what Christ hopes for the people that he calls his brothers and sisters. He calls us to be, uh, you know, one with each other as Christ is one with the Father and as Christ is one with us. This passage from 1 Peter reminds us there's plenty to tear us up. Personally, there's plenty to tear us up as a church, but we should not lose heart in our circumstances. First, God cares so much for us that we can cast all our cares and anxieties on God. And second, we're not alone. We have brothers and sisters in Christ of all ages. And many of them are undergoing the same thing that, that we're living through. It's not all about you or me. It's definitely not all about the preacher in a church. That's not what holds it together. Christ holds it together. On your darkest days, I pray that if you feel yourself drifting away from people, traveling away from people, that you'll remember that's not the way to go. The way to go is closer. Closer together in love for God, closer together in love for each other. Because as the psalm says, that's where you're going to find your blessing. That's where you're going to find your heaven, which is life forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got a hymn to sing, which is based on this, this verse from 1 Peter. It's uh, called the Cares Chorus, and so I invite you to stand. It's in the black hymnal, The Faith We Sing, on 2215, and we're going to sing it twice.
Please be seated as we go to a time of prayer. Oh Lord, we do give you thanks that as we learned in Vacation Bible School and this morning and as we just sang, that we can indeed cast all our cares upon you. I thank you for the chance to learn that in Vacation Bible School and for, for all who made that day possible, for Jennifer, Amy, Loretta, Sharon, Sue, Rena, Jasmine, Aniko. I thank you for the children who were here, who were a part of Vacation Bible School, who gave themselves to learning about you for a day. Inara, Gethin, Garant, Joy, Precious, Favor, Robbie, Simon, Cody, Jolie, and Marley. Help each of them and all of us to remember that they can give all their worries and cares to you because you care about them. We thank you for Roy and Mary who celebrated, just celebrated an anniversary and pray that they will have many happy years together. We pray for those who are on our hearts today. We give thanks for Roy's mother, who is 95, still um, in good health, and we give thanks for that. We pray, O oh Lord, for um, those who are not doing well, who are, who are ill. We pray today for Joel Rishti going into liver transplant surgery and for the family of the donor. We pray for a dear daughter that she will turn to God for Ursa. We pray for one waiting to have a biopsy at the end of this month. We pray that doctors will have the wisdom and understanding they need to help Jasmine with the pain, the chronic pain that she experiences. We give thanks that Karen came through her surgery well, and, and we pray for her continued healing. We pray for Jean Case and her health issues, grateful that she is at home. We pray for the family of Evelyn Kelly, who passed away this week. We pray for those with financial difficulties, who feel stretched beyond the limit, and aren't sure where to turn next. We pray for our church. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. We thank you most of all today for Jesus Christ, for the love and the forgiveness he lived, the love and forgiveness he died for, and help us to give ourselves fully to him and to his church. It is in his name we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, isn't it good to know that Jesus loves us? So let's, let's stand up and give some signs of peace to each other and show our love for each other in Christ's name. How good it is to see your beautiful faces this morning, to see you just passing each other the peace. As we go forward in worship, I thank you for your presence here. I thank you for the gifts that you bring to the church. If you brought offering today and you want a place to put it, there are two boxes on the table out in the narthex that you can slide into the slot there. Thank you for the way you support the church with your gifts. Uh, and I also thank you for your, your prayers for the church. Don't let those stop. Thank you for all the witness that you give. Uh, you know, I know that we have people here today because somebody invited them to come, right? And you are the people to do that because this is your church that you love. And so now let us continue in worship. remain standing and join me in the prayer of thanksgiving printed in your bulletin. O oh God of love, we give thanks for all you have given us to enjoy, for health, for the love and care of home, for joys of friendship, for every gift of happiness and strength. We praise you for all who by their example and encouragement have helped us on our way and for every vision which you have ever given us in sacrament or prayer. And we humbly ask that all these benefits we may use to serve you and to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The closing hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 147 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We'll sing verses 1 and 4.
actually just brought a request that we pray for a friend of hers, a dear friend who fell in her house and I believe is uh, having an, had an operation and is in rehab. And so we'll, we'll remember her in prayer this week as she heals. So receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.